דוקטור לייז, ערב טוב, how are you? ערב טוב, how are you, רב, how are you? ברוך השם, how are you, how are you doing? שוב, a lot of news happening here, a lot going on. Yeah. The Middle East never stop. But Rav, you know, we see, we see things that uh, it's just unbelievable. Can I, can I start? Bechavod, beta, come on. You know what, uh, maybe there's another few minutes. Okay. One minute, maybe we'll wait for the others. I'm sure that they would like to hear your news. Who's with us? First of all, who's with us? I see Dr. Lez with us. I see Stephen Kabetznik with us. Hello, Stephen. And Samsung. And who's that? Who's with us else? Samsung? Who's that? Who's with us? Not sure who's with us. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Ah, that's you. Frank, how are you? All okay. right, yourself. No, I didn't recognize because he doesn't say anymore. Frank, it's a different phone you have. Yeah, I've got a new phone, yes, yes. I, I don't know I'm going to do that. Okay, all right. Okay. okay, okay. I just wanted to know who's with us. Okay. Okay, okay. Good evening, everyone. Okay, so I think that we are 8 o'clock. Dr. Lez, Bechavod. Okay, so Rav, wow, so much is going on here. Um, there's never really ever a dull moment, but amazing news has come to light. So... Um, what happened is that, you know, there have been these incredible protests and tremendous anti-Semitism at many American universities, including Cornell, Harvard, uh, Berkeley. And Fox reported last night that these universities are receiving hundreds of millions of dollars from uh, mm. Qatar, from Arab countries, but hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So there's no wonder that they, you know, they've taken a very anti-Israeli stance and the, um, the deans of a lot of the um, departments at the universities are on the pay from, these, uh, from the, this money that's coming from, from very wealthy Arab states. So no wonder the anti-Semitism is increasing and there have been many Jewish donors that have now stopped, uh, they, they, uh, stopped their donations but it's really a drop in the ocean compared to the money that they're receiving. And uh, it was made, you know, it was made public that Honest Reporting, which was actually founded by a Jew, and they had um, uh, Roth, he was in charge of for many years, exceptionally anti-Israel, but extremely anti-Israel. They labeled Israel an apartheid state. They got funding from Saudi Arabia, millions of dollars from Saudi Arabia, and that was made public. Um, so, so when we hear about um, anti-Semitism on the rise, there's, there's, you know, there's underneath, there's, there's always something going on. But breaking news, which happened last night, which is rocked, and it should rock the world media, is honest reporting actually exposed that one of the reporters, and this is major news, his name is Hassan Aslia, so he was embedded with Hamas when they came into attack on the 7th of October. He was together there, he was taking photographs, and now Honest Reporting have put together, and they actually have seen him in other photographs that were taken, that he was with his camera going in with the Hamas when they came to cause their terrible massacre, and he was part of it. Now, he was a, a, a freelance journalist associated with CNN, associated with Reuters, associated with the New York Times. And it begs the question now, if he knew beforehand what was going to happen because he went with them early that morning, did he tell his employers that he was employed for? Not only that, if he took photos and he was watching while these tremendous atrocities were taking place, he's guilty of the same crimes. And it's unbelievable that you have the New York Times that still hasn't answered honest reporting. CNN said that they've actually now stopped their association with him a little bit too late. Um, and we're going to hear from Reuters. They've apologized. But apology really means very little after the fact is there. And it shouldn't come to, uh, to us as a big surprise that the New York Times, which is Jewish-owned, 
during the Shire, they buried all the stories about the Shire, like the 39th page at the bottom there. And they actually made uh, Adolf Hitler, Yamak Man of the Year in 1938. So the New York Times were employing this, this journalist who was together with Hamas when they perpetrated the worst evil that has befallen the Jewish nation since the Shoah. So I don't know if you're going to be seeing this. I doubt you're going to be seeing this on SABC. I doubt you're going to be seeing this in the Sunday Times or in any South African publication. But just go into Ynet, go into any Israeli newspaper, Times of Israel, Jerusalem Post, and there it is. So um, you just see the total sheker. And lastly, Rav, when we, there are going to be tremendous uh, protests in London, in all capitals in Europe, in America. Isn't it interesting that uh, there's no protests about the hostages? They don't mention the hostages because they don't really care. And tonight, there is a protest, a very good protest in Tel Aviv by the medical staff against the Red Cross. And they're saying to the Red Cross, what are you doing? How come you don't go and visit? How come you don't put pressure to find out what's happened to the babies, what's happened to the older people, what's happened to the refugees, what happened, what's happened to, to all our, our hostages that are sitting in the hellhole in Gaza? The Red Cross doesn't care, like they didn't care in the Shoah. What can we do? So thank God we've got our own nation, and we're going to protect ourselves, and this will never happen again. This is the motto now. Never again became ever again, but it's going to be never again. So it's we just want to wish you all a Shabbat Shalom, Rav. And uh, we should only know Basarot to vote. Amen. Thanks God that we have a Kadosh Baruch on our side. Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Lez, once again for all the updates. Beautiful update. Thank you very much. Rabotai, this Shabbos we're going to read Parashat Hayesara. Hayesara, it's a very interesting parasha. And by Ezrat Hashem, we're going to read, uh, we're going to try to bring some idea about the Parsha that will help you on Shabbos to have a different idea what is hiding behind the Torah, what the Torah tells us. I would like to dedicate the show, sorry, in a soul of Esther Kadem Bat Ketia, Mordechai ben Rahma, Rav Avran, Chaim ben Eliezer Yaakov, Tamar bat Zehava, Yaakov Salomon ben Paha, Dvora Ruth bat Beila, Malka Regina bat Joya, Keti Gurgia bat Farha, Veshosha Blima bat Mordechai bet Shalel. Nishmatam tiet tzrora betzura hain, im shro im kol sha'ar mete Israel. Also, I would like to dedicate the shaur in, uh, in uh, help of Menashe Naji ben Farha, Liora bat Miriam. Uh, הרב משה בן באי אבטיה, הרב משה בן דבורה, הרב שלמה יהודה בן דליה, הרב אברהם בן מרינה, דבורה בת אסתר, אורנה בלומה בת מרים, שיינה קיילה בת חנה, מרדכי דוד בן לאה, חיים נחום בן פסע רזה, אהובה קדן בת טלי אסתר, ברוך בן שרה היינה, ניצן בן ורד, שמואל מאיר בן שושה בלימה, יהודה הלל בן שולמית לאה, משה אברהם בן חנה ריבה, היה ציפורה בת רחל, היה לה עדן בת רבקה, טוב אליבא בת רחל, שרה בת פנינה, יהושע חיים, בן חיה לאה, ולאה בת רחל, וכל שאר חולה ופצועי עמו בית ישראל בכל מקום שהם. ג'פרי, don't forget to unmute your microphone, we starting. We start פרשת חיי שרה. ויהיו חיי שרה. מאה שנה ועשרים שנה ושבע שנים שני חיי שרה. Sarah's lifetime was 100 years, 20 years, and 7 years. The years of Sarah's life. Hmm. Rabotai, on that verse, there's many questions, but we're going to tackle tonight only two questions. We're going to start with the first, what it say here, Vayihiyu. How come the departure starts to tell us Vayihiyu? And those was the life of Sarai Menu. And then look what it says, Mea Shana, 100 years. In Hebrew, it says Shana. It doesn't say Shanim, singly. Esrim Shana, singly. When it's come to Sheva, it says Shanim. How come? Why doesn't say Mea Shanim, Esrim Shanim, Vesheva Shanim? 
How come that only when it's come to Sheva, it's come to tell you in plural? The rest is in singular. Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll try to take all that. And we start the parsha. I saw a beautiful commentary of Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar. Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar, born in the city of Sali in Morocco. He born around 326 years ago, 327 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, in Morocco. He wrote the famous commentary, Or Haim HaKadosh. And there he said, why does the parsha start with the word Vayihiyu? Because Hazal and Gemara in Masechet Megillah, page 10, folio 2, tell us, Bechol makom shenemar, wherever it's mentioned the word Vayihi, the word Vayihi, it's referring to pain, sorry, and agony. So why did he say here, Vayihiyu haye Sarah? And the life of Sarah Imenu was 120. What was the Hedushia? That's what asked the Orahaim HaKadosh. So on the Pshat of the Dvarim, we can answer it because Sarai Menu passed away. Sarai Menu passed away. Therefore, therefore, because she passed away, it's a pain, sorrow, and agony, you know, it's not a joy, it's not a happy. That's why it's a Vayiyu. But come, Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, and give us a deeper explanation. And he said like this, it says in Midrash Tanhuma. Midrash Tanhuma been written by Rabbi Tanhuma that was a sage. He said that, you know why it says you? I tell you why it says you, that referring to pain and agony, because Sarai Menu, when she died, was the reason why she died. Hazal explained that the angel of death, that Yetzirah, came to Sarai Menu and tell her, listen, I see an old man and a young man going together, walking together. And the old man holding a knife in his hand and is holding a fire in his hand while the young man holding the log carrying the log on his back. And then he tell her, he put in that, the old man put the young man where? On the altar. And he's ready to share them. So I man was happy. But then the Yetzirah saw that, what did he say to Sarai Menu? I see that now the young man and the old man walking together back. Sarai Menu had felt so bad that she said, what's happening here? What's happening here? I don't understand. Say Hazal that Sarai Menu heard that the Malach Amave told her that now it's Hakavinu not going to be sacrificed on the altar. Sarai Menu was worried, might it's Hakavinu not deserve to be sacrificed on the altar. That means that has Shalom, there is a blemish, something wrong with its Hakavinu. When Sarai Menu heard that, that message from the Yetzirah, Sarai Menu died from pain and agony. Said the Orahai Makadosh, now you can understand why is the Parsha start? Vayihiyu. That's referring to pain and agony. You know what caused Sarai Menu pain and agony? That when the Yetzirah come and given her the message, given her the message that it's Hakavinu didn't be sacrificed on the altar. She was thinking that Has Shalom he doesn't deserve for the deserve to be die for the sake of heaven. And that's what hurt her. That's what caused her a lot of pain and agony. And that's what she done. And that's why the Parsha Sera behind the Natal start with the word Vayihiyu. Where do we learn? Hazal and Gemara and Masachet Megillah in page 10 tell us that the word Vayihi referring to pain and agony. Where did they learn that? They learn that from the Megillah. Megillah to stay. What is it say, say there? That the Megillah, the Megillah say Vayihi bi'imea hashverosh. It was in a time of the king Ahashverosh. 
It says wherever the word Vayehiyu mentioned or Vayehi, referring to pain and agony. And that's the pain and agony that the Torah speak about. That's the, what's hiding behind the word Vayehiyu. Then we say that it says in the parsha something very interesting. The Torah tells us that Vayehiyu haye sara mea shana in singly. Esrim shana in singly. Sheva Shanin in plural. How come? Why? So the Mefarshim explain, and here comes the Zohar Kadosh. The Zohar Kadosh says something extraordinary. The Zohar Kadosh explains like this. By the way, the Zohar that I'm going to bring is in page, uh, where is it? It's the Zohar Kadosh in, I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Ready? Hundred and I think it's hundred and twenty-one. Okay, in, in Parashat Hayesara, hundred and twenty-one for you to. The Zohar says like this: Man dehu zair ihu rab, uman dehu rab ihu zair. That's in Aramaic. I will translate what the Zohar says. The Zohar says, whoever gets honor and respect in this world, you must understand for the world to come. He doesn't have respect. The same, and what is the opposite, a person that is a scholar person, but here he doesn't, no one give him, no one look at him, you know? In a world to come, he has a lot of respect. And there is a story, Robota and Agimara, in Masechet Psahim, in page 50, folio 1. Hazal tell us about the story about Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef was uh, the son of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. And one day he died, he was very sick, and he died. But the sages felt sorry for Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi and the old daven, and they brought him back alive. When he came alive and he healed, Azal tells us in the Gemara that his father, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, by the way, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi entered the Gan Eden with a full body. It's a nice story that we mentioned that he took the sword of Malach Amavet. It's a long story, not for now. He asked his son, my son, when you've gone up to heaven, what do you see in heaven? He said to, he said to him like this, Olam hafuk ra'iti. I saw an upside down world. Upside down world. Then his father, Rabbi Abi Yeshua ben Levi, said to him, Olam yashar ra'ita. You know. You didn't see upside down. You saw correctly. What you saw in heaven, it's exactly. You say, whoever gets a lot of honor and respect, okay, in this world, you must understand for the world to come, he consider very small. Those that hear, no one respect them, no one give them honor, up in heaven, they have a lot of kabod, they have a lot of respect. In a world to come, you'll see the truth. Why? Because the world to come is a word of truth. Yeah, the world, this world is upside down. All, all of this world is a world of false. Say the Mepharshim like this. Say the Mepharshim and say the Zohar Kadosh, what it's come to teach you, that Sarai Menu never publicizes life. Sarai Menu was very humble, very modest. She didn't want anyone to know about her deeds about her kindness that she done with her husband. That's what it says, Me'a Shana, Esrim Shana, V'Sheva Shani. That means that Sarai Menu try all her life to hide as much she, that she can, that no one will know the good deeds that she's doing, the kindness and the help that she given others. Sarai Menu was very modest. That in that case, that's why it says Sheva Shanim, when it's come to the last number, number seven, that refer to seven years, 427, that's what it's come to tell us. That Sarai Menu in this world tried to hide everything, didn't want to show her greatness. And that's why Hazal telling us here that that's what it's hinting to us, say Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai Nezor that it's come to him to us, the greatness of Sarah Imenu. Now, with your permission, I would like to move on
to verse 2. And here we have to see what's happening here. Vatamot Sara Bekiryat Arba, he Hebron, Be'eretz Kenan, Vayavo Abraham Lispod Le Sara Velifkota. Sarah died in Kiryat Arba, which is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to eulogize Sarah and to bewail her. So there is two questions here. If you look at your homage, number one, you see that the letters Ha is a very small letters. When it says it's Kota, the letters Ha is small. Why? Question number one. Question number two, it says Vayavo Avraham, and Avraham came. The Torah doesn't tell us where is he come from. The Torah doesn't tell us where is he come from. So there's two questions. Where is he come from, number one? And why the letters Raf in the word Lifkota, to cry for her, is very small. What is the Hedush here? What can we learn from them? That's the two questions that we have to tackle. And by Zerat Hashem, those what we're going to tackle. So let's start one by one. We say, Vayavo Abraham, and Abraham came. The Torah doesn't tell us where. Hazal in a Midrash tell us in Bereshit Rabbah, Midrash Bereshit Rabbah on our, on our parsha in, uh, sorry, in Parashat Noah, actually it's mentioned. Okay, in Parashat Noah, not in our parsha, in Parashat Noah, the Midrash Rabbah, that it say, Vayavo, Avraham, and Avraham came. You know where he came? From Hara Moriah. Avraham came from Hara Moriah. Ask them a Farshim, you know, so what's the Hidush? Well, what is the Hidush that you tell me, Hara Moriah? Why you didn't tell me that he came from the Akeda? No, he came from Hara Moriah. What's the Hidush? So on the Pshat of the Dvarim, Hazal said that he came from Hara Moriah. When he heard that his wife died, immediately he gone back to Hebron, where she passed away. That's on Pshat of the Dvarim. But I saw a different interpretation. Come, there is a book with that uh, that called Hadrash Ve'ayun. Hadrash Ve'ayun is a book that been written by Rabbi Aharon Halevin. Rabbi Aharon Halevin, if I'm not mistaken, he born in Galicia. He born around 143 years ago, 144 years ago. Don't hold me into it. In his book Hadrash Ve'ayun, he says something very, very interesting. He said, let me explain to you why Hazal in a Midrash say Mehara Moriah, from the mountain of Moriah. What was the Hedush here? He said that here Abraham Avinu, when he wanted to eulogize and to cry for Sarah, what did he start eulogizing? He eulogized to Sarah nothing about, uh, I'm sure that he did, but the one important thing that he eulogized and he put the emphasis on for them, and that was what he put as Sarah's virtue is Hara Moriah. Why? That Sarah in Menu that have a son in the age of 90, and she brought up a son and she given him such a way of life to love Akadosh Baruch Hu, that it's Hakavinu in the age of 37, was willing to sacrifice himself to HaKadosh Baruch Say, Rabbi Aaron Alev, that's what it says here, Velispod, Vayavo Avram Lispod, when he come to eulogize, he spoke about what's happened in Hara Moriah, that how it's Hakavinu, that was in the age of 37, was willing to give up his own soul for Akadosh Baruch Hu and saying to his father, tie me very tight, that I'm not going to move, because if Haz Shalom I move, it's like the Korban going to be pasul, that I am as a Korban, Haz Shalom, I can be pasul. Therefore, tie me very tight, that I'm not going to be afraid when I see the knife, 
that I'm going to be a pure korban that I can be sacrificed to HaKadosh Baruch without a blemish. And say Rabbi Aaron Alevin, that's what Hazal tell us in the Midrash, that Abraham Avinu came from where? From Haramuriya. What was his emphasis? How Sarai Menu brought up a son that was willing to give his own life, to sacrifice his own life to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's what it's called to eulogize. And that's what it means, where does he come from? But then we ask a second question. Why is it say the word lifkota with the letters chav ktana? So the Mepharshim explain, and I'm going to bring the interpretation of Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim. Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim born in Germany. He born around 700 and 760 years ago, 759, 760 years ago. And he said like this. He said, let me explain to you. He said that Abraham Avinu, first of all, you have to understand by that that it's a chav ktana, according to the Pshat of the Dvarim, Abraham Avinu didn't cry a long time, and for a long. He cried very shortly, and then immediately he gone after the eulogize, he started to go on to prepare to find a grave for Sarai Menu that will speak shortly about it. That's on Shat of the Dvarim. But he said that there is here what Hazal tell us, and you have to understand. Hazal in the Gemara and Masachet Baba Batra, 16 folio 2, Hazal tell us that Sarai Menu didn't have only its Hakavinu. She had also a daughter. Say Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim, according to the Gemara in Masechet Baba Batra in page 16, if you look from far away, you see that the word Lifkota with the Chav Ketana, it looks like Lebita. That means that Avraham Avinu come to eulogize and to cry not only to Sarah, also for the daughter of Sarah, that Hazal tell us. That means that when Abraham Avinu come to eulogize, to Sarai, eulogize also for her daughter that died with her. At the same time, and they both heard that the Malach the Malach Mavet, try to entice Sarah. Why is your son, when he saw that Sarah was happy that her son going to sacrifice himself, he said to her, how come that your son never gone been sacrificed? And Sarai have so much grief for it, so much pain, that that what caused her to pass away. So that's when the other daughter, the daughter, not the other daughter, the daughter of Sarah passed away. Then there is another explanation that why Dafka, that Haftana, that Hazal say that Abraham Avinu when he spoke, everyone spoke about Sarai Menu. We know the Midrash that, that say, Bat Mea Kebat Esrim, Blihet Batsheva Layofi. That means that it's come to tell you that Abraham Avinu, when he eulogized Sarah, he spoke on a lettuce 20. What it means, that he spoke about the righteousness of Sarai Menu. That's a sword that brought by Rabbi. Eliyahu Yitzhak Mibrisk. Rabbi Eliyahu Yitzhak Mibrisk keep bringing that interpretation. And let's go to verse 3. And look what it says here. And here is a punchline. Rabotai, there is a very beautiful punchline. Look what it says here. Vayakum Avraham me'al pene meitu. Vayidaber el benechet le'emo. Bechavod, Jeffrey. <clears throat> Abraham rose up from the presence of his dead and spoke to the children of Chet, saying, Okay, here we see that the Torah tells us that Abraham Avinu rise 
on the front of his dead, but the Torah doesn't say that. The Torah tells us, Vayakom Avram, Avram rise, Me'al Pnei Meto, above the face of the deceased. Who's the deceased? We know it's Sarai Men. Come all the Mepharshim and ask, what happened here? Why is the Torah tell us that Abraham Avinu have to raise up, leave the deceased, okay, but he raise up on the, on the top of the face of the deceased. The key word, the face, Pne Meto. On a shot of the Dvarim, we know that Abraham Avinu stood up, rise up, and going to find a grave to bury Sarai men. That's on the shot of the boy. Come the Mepharshim and ask, wait, why if the Torah wrote Me'al Pne Meto above, or oh, he stood up, he raised up above the face of his deceased? What's so important that the Torah tell us the face of his deceased? Pne Amet the face of the dead person, the face of the deceased. I saw a beautiful commentary that wrote by um, Rabbi Yonatan Eifschitz. Rabbi Yonatan Eifschitz, born in the city of Krakow in Poland, he born around 332, 333 years ago. I think more 332 years ago. In his book uh, that called Yarod Vash, The Forest of Honey, and there, he bring interpretation that been mentioned in a midrash, and Hazal tell us in a midrash that the people that can be buried in Maharat Machpelah, it's only people that die with a kiss of death, the death of kiss. Say Hazal in the Gemara in Masechet Avodah Zara, page twenty, volume two. חזל סי נגמר על מסכת עבודה. מלאך המוות, שלוש טיפים תלויים בחרבו. Three drops there is on the top of his sword. One a day. טיפה אחת הורג בה, that one tip he killed the person, the one tip he changed the color and the face of a disease, and the third tips that the body, the body of the deceased gets smelly and decay. Say, Rabbi Yonatan Eifschitz, Abraham Avinu knew that the person that's going to be buried in Ma'arat HaMachpela, they have to be people that Malach HaMavel didn't judge them. They died because they reached the time, not because they done Averot. Abraham Avinu wanted to find a grave to Sarai men. And we know that Abraham Avinu looked at the face of Sarai Menu, say Rabbi Yonatan Aishit, and he wanted to know if the face changed, if she was scared when she saw Malach Amavit. Say, say Rabbi Yonatan Aishit that when he looked at Sarai Menu's face, he saw that it had nothing to do with the angel of death. Therefore, Abraham Avinu raised up immediately and go to buy the Ma'arat HaMachpelah, the grave of the Patriot. Why? Because only a person that didn't been killed by Malach HaMavot can be buried there. And Sarai Menu, when he looked at her face, he see that nothing wrong with her face. Her face didn't change. That means that she died the death of kiss. In that case, Sarai Menu can be buried in Ma'arat HaMachpelah. Immediately he rose up and he left to go and bury it. And that's what it says, Vayakom Avraham me'al pene meito. That Avraham has been raised and from the face of the deceased, above the face of the deceased. And that's what it means, pene meito. That there is not one word in the Torah that come for no reason. And if the Torah tell us me'al pne meito, that Abraham Avinu raised up after he looked at the face of Sarai Menu when he saw that she died normal, 
death, nothing to do with the angel of death, immediately he rose up and he gone to negotiate, to buy the Maharat HaMachpelah, the grave, the grave of Petrio. I'm going to jump a bit and I'm going to speak now about the 400 shekel. We know that the Torah tells us in uh, chapter 23, verse 16, something very interesting. Look what the Torah tells us. Vaishma Avraham el Ephron. Vaishkol Avraham la Ephron et a kesef asher diber beozne bnehe. Abraham heeded Ephron. And Abraham weighed out to Ephron the price which he had mentioned in the hearing of the children of Het. 400 silver shekels in negotiable currency. <laughs> Look what it says here. 400 shekel negotiable currency. The Torah tells us that Abraham Avinu, on a shot of the dream, given a form, 400 shekel negotiable currency. What it means, negotiable currency? That everywhere that you walk without currency, they will accept it. For example, the pound, the euro, the dollars, everyone accepts it. Come the Mefarshim and ask why. Dafka, the Torah, tell us 400, the number 400, what's hiding behind number 400. And number two, why is the Torah tell us that the currency that Abraham Avinu given at one, it was a negotiable currency? What difference does it make to me? What is difference does it make? About I, I'm going to bring the Baal Aturim, Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim, and I'm going to bring also the, the the mystical Rebbe, what they explain behind the number 400. And then, who oh, I'm going to bring the great eagle, the Rambam, the Maimonite, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon. Why does it have to be a currency that can be negotiable? That's the two questions that we have. So Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll start to explain. Say, Rabbi Yaakov, where did uh, Ephron come with the number 400? Where did Abraham Avinu come with the number 400? Say, Rabbi Yaakov Baalatul Matel. When Ephron started to negotiate with Abraham, Abraham Avinu said to him, how much money you want? He said, listen, your name is Abraham. The middle letters in your name is Resh. My name is Ephron. My, the middle letters in my name is Resh. We bought Resh. The gematria of Resh is 200. 200 of yours and 200 of mine. Together, it's 400. Therefore, give me 400. Okay, that's the drash. There's another explanation that bring Rabbi Yaakov Bala to him. And he said like this. He said, if you look carefully in a Pasuk, when it's wrote a form, it's wrote without the letters Vav. If you do the gematria of a form without the Vav, Vaishkol Avraham le form, it's gematria 400. Therefore, a form asks for 400 shekel. Okay? Come, the mystical rabbi, Hachemeasod. And say, no, the local kach pashut 400. 400 been mentioned a number of times in a Torah Shebechtav, Torah Shebe'al Peh. The number 400 represent the evil forces. In Torah Shebechtav, the Torah tells us in our written Torah, Torah tells us when Isaf came to meet Yaakov Avinu, that Isaf came to meet, he brought with him Arba Mot Ish. 400 men. Hazal in the Gemara say that about Hillel Azaken, that it was a bet between two people that tried to antagonize and to entice Hillel Azaken, and they have a bet on 400. It was Arab Shabbat, Hazal say, and a man come and say, if you manage to make Hillel Azaken cross, I'll pay you 400. 
Sikh, the mystical rabbi, and then many of these, many more, just don't want to waste too much time on it. Hazal said that the number 400 represent the 400 evil forces that there is in the world. Okay? And that's what Ephron wanted. Okay. That will help us to understand now why, what I listened to that, that when it came to currency, the Torah tell us that Abraham Avinu given Ephron a currency that it's very negotiable, easy to negotiable with. Everyone will agree to it. Say the great eagle. The great eagle is the Rambam, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon. Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, he born in a city of Cordova in Spain. He born around 883 years ago or 884 years ago, I'm not sure. And in Ilchot Avodazara, in the law of idol worshipping, he say like this, say the Rambam, that a Jewish person, if he's doing a business or you want to sell something to a Gentile, not allowed to send to a Gentile a piece of gold or a piece of silver. Say the, the, the Rambam, Hakam, is saying that it might, that person that is a Gentile, if he buy a piece of gold or piece of silver or piece of any other metal, he might gonna melt it and he's gonna make from it idols, and that's gonna be what he gonna worship to for. He said, therefore, Abraham Avinu was so worried that when he bought the land of Maharata Machpela, he makes sure that a form is no wasn't uh, great believer in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he was an idol worshiper. He said, therefore, I have to be careful. I'm going to give him a currency that negotiable. And a currency that negotiable, he's not going to melt it to make from an idol that he's going to bow down to it and worship it. He said, that's why the Torah tell us, listen to that, why, that's why the Rambam explained. You know why you know why Abraham Avinu given a throne, a currency that negotiable? That it's not going to be a chance that a throne has Shalom going to make, going to make from the money any idols. And that's why he given him the currency. That's why the Torah tells us. To show us the righteousness of Abraham Avinu. Who was Abraham Avinu? That he was worried that his money has the shalom not going to be turned to idols, to Abu Dazar. I'm going to skip now, and we're going to go to chapter 24, verse 1. And we see here something very interesting, and we have to understand what's happening. The Abraham Zaken, Baba Yamin, the Adonai Berech et Abraham Bakol, now, Abraham was old, well on in years, and Hashem had blessed Abraham with everything. Okay, here the Torah tells us that Akadosh Baruch Hu, when Abraham was old, Akadosh Baruch Hu blessed Abraham with everything. What is me with everything? Hazal say, and, and Rashi say, that if you take the word Bachol, it's Gematria Ben, that he blessed him with a son. Okay, that's Rashi HaKadosh, Rabbi Shlomo Itzhaki. He born in the city of Troa, city of Troa, in the north of France, 983 years ago. Yeah, 983 years ago. That's Rashi HaKadosh. Rashi HaKadosh continues and say, listen to that. Who the Bedino? Rashi say, first of all, that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu blessed, wait, there is some noise at the back. Let me just uh, clear the noise. I'm going to clear the noise and then we continue. Rashi HaKadosh say that who the Bedino? 
what it means, who the Bedin, all referring to the Almighty, that the Almighty and the Bet Din and of heaven agree to bless Abraham with everything. What it means with everything? Come the Gaon Hida, Rabbi Haim Yosef David Azulai. Rabbi Haim Yosef David Azulai, born in Jerusalem 299 years ago. And say Rabbi the Gaon Hida, Rabbi Haim Yosef David Azulai, like this. He said that Hazal teaching us something very interesting in a midrash in Yalkut Reuveni. Hazal tell us when a person dives into a Kadosh Baruch Hu for health, for wealth, prosperity, whatever he dives, a Kadosh Baruch Hu immediately granted. But then come the Malach that criticize against that, that's Yetzirah, and say to a Kadosh Baruch Hu, wait, before you bring in the prosperity down, this person done Averot, how can you give him? He doesn't deserve. And here comes the negotiation, to give a person, not to give a person, to give him help, to cure him, not to cure him. There is, a, there is a, what we call it an argument in heaven, if the person deserve it or not. Say the Gaon Hida, when it's come to Abraham Avinu, what Rashi say, who the bet dino, that means that Abraham Avinu, and when HaKadosh Baruch Hu blessed Abraham Avinu, not only HaKadosh Baruch Hu granted his wish of Abraham Avinu, also the Bet Din. That means even the Yetzer Ara, those that try to criticize against Abraham Avinu, also agree. That means no one tried to stop the prosperity and the wealth and the health to Abraham Avinu. Say the Gaon Hida, how do I learn? It says, Vehashem, Birech et Abraham. That means that the Almighty and He court, that means the Beddi, agree that Abraham Avinu deserve everything, that he deserve all the, all the prosperity. He said, from here, you learn something very important. What was the mitzvah that Abraham Avinu was holding to it very strong? Hesed, kindness. He said that, said the Gaon Hida, from here you learn. A person that do hesed with the briot, that do kindness with other people, he said that even the angel that's in charge, that that's mean, the yetzer, the evil inclination, cannot criticize against him. Because he's doing kindness with other people, Akadosh Baruch Hu grant whatever he asks when it's come to Hesed. Akadosh Baruch Hu do kindness with him. You learn from here, said the Gaon Hida, how important is it to do Hesed with other people? I would like to move now to verse 2. And here we're going to bring the Zerah Shimshon. Vayomer Avraham el Avdo Skan Beito. המושל בכל אשר לא, שים ידך תחת ירכי. בכבוד, ג'פרי, just unmute the מיקרופון. And Abraham said to his servant, the elder of his household, who controls all that is his, place now your hand under my thigh. Okay, here the Torah tells us that Abraham Avinu called his servant Eliezer that was in charge about his household and asked him to go to find a wife to its Avinu to his son. But he asked him to go to where? He asked him to go to Aram Naharaim, not to take a wife from Eretz Kenan. And the Mephashim asked, a very valid question. Listen to that. Hazal tell us in the Gemara in Masechet Brachot. Hazal tell us that a person that is a servant, okay, they cannot do shlichot. Why? Because a servant 
חז"ל הנה גמרא עם מסכת ברכות, עם פייג' אותי פעת כל יתום. חז"ל אנסר דר, משום שפרוצים הם, בוא נצמין פרוצים הם, that they love immorality. פשוט. חז"ל הנה גמרא במסכת ברכות, say that a servant cannot join a zimun to do ברכת המזון. Why? Because they פרוצים הם. That they love immorality. Come the Zera Shimshon, that was a great Kabbalistic Rabbi Shimshon Chaim Nachmadi. He born in the city of Modena, in uh, north of Italy, 318 years ago. And he, in his book Zera Shimshon, he asked a valid question. He said, I don't understand. Abraham Avinu didn't want to take a wife to his son from Eretz Kenan. Why? Because the woman there, wasn't, didn't have moral. But he's sending his servant to find a wife to his son. And especially that Hazal tell us in the Gemara that the servant put him in. You cannot trust him. So how come that Abraham Avinu sent Eliezer to go and find a wife? How can it be? said the Zerah Shimshon, I'll answer you. Hazal in the Gemara in Masechet Yoma 28, Folio 2. Hazal tell us something extraordinary. Hazal tell us Damesek Eliezer. What does it mean? Skan Beito, that means that Eliezer, Jehud Damesek Eliezer, that means he's seven. Used to learn Torah from Avraham Avinu. Dole Torah mirabo umashke laacherim. That Gemara Masechet Yoma 28 for you too. What does it mean? Hazal say in the Gemara something extraordinary. Hazal say that uh, Eliezer used to study Torah. With who? With Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu used to teach him. And if Avraham Avinu taught him Torah and Eliezer used to teach the other's Torah, therefore, he wasn't. Why? Because he was a decent man, because he studied Torah with Avraham Avinu. And if Avraham Avinu decided to teach him Torah, that means that Avraham Avinu trusts him, that he can learn Torah and he is a decent man, and he trusts him to send, to bring a wife to Yitzhak Avinu that you're going to bring a decent wife. And Baruch Hashem, we saw that that was. And that's how we explain the Zer Shimshon. How can it be that it's Hakavinu and that Abraham Avinu trust Eliezer to bring a wife to it's Hakavinu that was a servant, although that he was a servant. As Rat Hashem on Shabbos, I explain it more deeply that we're going to bring a different Marot to make it even more difficult on Shabbat. Okay, let's continue. In uh, chapter in chapter 25, because the time running late, we don't have a lot of time, I want to finish on time. In chapter 28, verse 7, look what the Torah tells us, and the Torah tells us something very interesting. The Torah tells us like this. Ve'ele yeme שני חיי אברהם אשר חי מאת שנה ושבעים שנה וחמש שנה. בכבוד. רב, did you say 28 or 25 chapter? 25? Yes. 25, 7. Chapter 25, verse 7. Yes. Sorry, I couldn't see left. Yeah, a hundred years, seventy years, and five years. Okay, here the Torah tell us the years of Abraham Avinu, but look what she had up, that he lived. Obviously, if you tell me the life that he lived, why do you have to repeat and say that he lived? If you tell me that he lived for 175, why did you tell us that he lived? So, that question been asked by the Ramah Mipano. Ramah Mipano is Rabbi 
Menachem Azariah Mipano, was a great Kabbalistic. He lived, uh, he born in the city of Bologna. Bologna is in Italy. He born around 473, 700, 474 years ago, plus one. And he says, let me explain to you why the Torah say Asher Hai. What it mean that he lived? He said, where is it mentioned before again? He said, Asher Hai mentioned also with Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon, it's your name Asher Hai, that he lived. Adam Arishon was supposed to live for a thousand years, but because he gave 70 years of his life to David Amelech, he lived for 930 years. Said the Ramah Mipano, Avraham Avinu was supposed to live for 180. But because Akadosh Baruch Hu didn't want to cause grief and pain to Avraham Avinu that he will see his grandson Esav growing up and doing so much sorrows and become such a wicked, Akadosh Baruch Hu shortened five years from the life of Avraham Avinu. Therefore, he lived for 175. Said the Ramah Mipano that when it say Asher Hai that he lived to tell you the same lack, the life of Adam Arishon being shortened by 70 years, also the life of Avraham Avinu being shortened by five years. Why? That Akadosh Baruch Hu didn't want Avraham Avinu to suffer when he'll see that he had such a great, such a wicked grandson. What is he done? Akadosh Baruch Hu shortened his life by five years, and he passed in the age of 175. What does it come to teach us? Wherever it say Asher Hai, that he lived, that he was supposed to live longer, but they shortened his life. That's what said the Ramah Mipano. That's the secret here. And by Zarat Hashem, Rabotai, that we should all merit us and all the Jewish people over the world to merit, to live a long life, to merit, to see Mashiach Titkenu speedily in our day. Amen, Kenny Ratzon. And I would like to dedicate the Sheol, number one, for the health of those that have been kidnapped, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will release them from their captivity speedily, that also those that injured that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will heal them. A heal that not going to be any pain on it. Those amongst the Jewish people that need help, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will heal them speedily with no pain and agony. And those that passed away for the sake of heaven, they said they Kadoshim, they holy people. And they should dive into Akadosh Baruch Hu to send us Mashiach Tzitkenu speedily in our day. Amen, Keniratzon, that we see the building and coming of Mashiach in our day. Amen, Keniratzon. I hope that you enjoy the show, Rabotai. I hope that that's given you a different way on Shabbos, Be'ezrat Hashem, when you're going to read the parsha to look at the parsha. Those of you that want to ask questions, Please unmute the microphone and can ask questions. Bechavot. Rob, can I kick off? <laughs> no, you. Bechavot, bechavot. Good evening. Good evening. There seems yeah, to be a cool. tremendous. A, there seems to be a tremendous connection with the way this verse is spoken. Ma'ish shana. Ma'ach shana. Yes. Shavim shana. The Chamesh, Shanaim, just like with Sarah. That's Could it be exactly a like Sarah. There is a big connection. What's the connection? Could it be that we know that Abraham Avinu and Sarai Menu, they bought was the pillar of Hesed on the world. Abraham Avinu used to convert the male, the men, while Sarai Menu done the conversion for the female, for the woman. That means that they bought, brought of them, both of them. What was their purpose on life? That people are going to believe in the Almighty. 
Remember, in their time, they didn't have Torah. They have only seven law of Noah. One of the mitzvot that you have in a seven, Besheva mitzvot Noah, to believe that there is one God, not to worship idol. Sarah Imenu, and Avraham Avinu, the life project, okay? Like we come to the Shabbat, like we have Shabbos project, etc. The life project, the life mission, or the mission of life for them, what was it? To convert the world to believe that there is one God, that there is a creator against paganism. So Abraham Avinu and Sarah Imenu, everything that they done, they done it how? With modesty and quietly. Abraham Avinu stood on one side and the rest of the world against them. The modesty and the humility of Abraham and Sarah was exactly the same. The Seder, Jeffrey? Yes, yes, Rob. Yes. You understand the connection? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Good. Well, Any other question? Bechavod, those of you that want to ask questions. Bechavod. Any question? Any other question? Bechavod. Ken, well, Bechavod, no? Do we, do we know, do we know the name of the daughter of Sarah? Yes, yes. Everything. Hazal said in the Gemara Masechet Baba Batra, page 16, folio 2. No, Baba Batra, point one. Yeah, point, folio one, I think folio one, if I'm not mistaken, that the name of the daughter of Sarah was Bechol. The daughter of Abraham and Sarai Menu, her name was Bechol. Uh, ah. uh, I'll tell you another secret. What was the name of the mother of Rivka Imenu? Rivka Imenu, in the end of the Parsha, the Torah tell us, the, the Torah tell us that uh, Eliezer gone to fetch Rivka from Haran. Okay, the Torah tells us that her father was Betuel, the brother was Lavan, but the mother didn't be mentioned. Her mother was, Hazal said, the name of her mother was Devorah. Wow. Why they call, why did they call Lavan, her brother Lavan Arami, Shayaramai, that he was a crook, the Hazal. Why they call her father Betuel, as I'll explain, that he was a very uh, important person and he was like a mayor of the, the, uh, the city. And every woman that was supposed to go and marry the husband, the night before she married, she spent the night with him. And it's called Betuel, Milshon Betulin. Okay, so yeah. now you can understand why the angel killed Betuel. Why did he kill Betuel? Hazal said, Nachon, that he changed, that Betuel wanted to kill who? Eliezer. That he swapped, so, so the angel swapped the gloss because he put poison on a, on a water. But say, Hazal, that's Bethesda. There's a secret into it. Say Hazal that Betuel wouldn't do it to Rivka. Because Rivka now going to marry who? It's a chak. Baruch Hu said, Rivka, you're not touching. I'm going to kill you before. There's a lot of secrets. Uh, I see Ive uh, want to ask a question. Ive Bechavod, Anthony Bechavod, I see that you're trying to ask a question. Bechavod. Bechavod, Anthony. Any question, Ive? 
I must unmute. Uh, the unmute. Yeah. See? I think that the unmute. No, the unmute. No, no, either is unmute. I don't know why they may be trying because I see that he's trying to come in. Any other question, Rabota, regarding the Parsha? I hope that it's going to give you a different look at the Parsha. Why is it say Me'al Pnei There is another interesting thing in the, in the Parsha. If we are already talking, I'm going to share it with you. And it's going to give you something to think about. What's happening in the, in the Parsha? It's something very, very interesting that we can see. And uh, look what it say here. Where is it? Yeah, look here. In, in chapter 24, verse 31. Vayomer, bo, baruch Adonai, lama ta'amod bahut, v'anokhi piniti abayit, u'makom lagmalim. Chapter two. Bravo, Jeffrey. I'm, I'm going back to it, bro. <clears throat> Chapter 24, uh, verse 31. Verse 31. Right. He said, Come, O blessed of Hashem. Why should you stand outside when I have cleared the house and place for the camels? Okay. On a shot of the Dvarim, listen to that, Rabotan. Lavan saying to <coughs> Eliezer, Come, bless Hashem. Hashem is blessed. Okay? I clear the house and there is space for the camel. What's happening there? So Hazal in a Midrash say, and Rashi bring the Midrash of uh, Bereshit Rabbah. That what he said to him, I clear the house, I clear all the idols from the house. You can come in. And why it said for the camel? And why it said bless the shame? Why is it so important that he clear the house? And it said bless the shame. No. So I'm not going to keep you long, but this one I'm going to speak on Shabbos. Some of you are going to be on a show on Shabbos, so you might going to hear it twice. But listen to the Hedush. That said, the Zerah Shimshon. The Zerah Shimshon say that when Lavan saw that Abraham Avinu sent Eliezer, he realized that Eliezer is not a slave anymore. Why? Because Hazal tell us something very interesting. Hazal tell us that in the Gemara in Masechet, uh, where, where did I see it? Which Gemara? Let me think. I think in Masechet Yoma, yeah. Masechet Yoma 22, folio 28, sorry, not 22, 28, folio 2. Hazal say that Avraham Avinu, okay, when he decide to send Eliezer, he taught him Torah. So Eliezer become, number one, we explained that he become blessed. He's not cursed anymore. Come the Mepharshim and say, when Lavan saw that Eliezer come with the gold, with the jewelry, with, uh, with, the, ne with the necklaces, with the bracelet, with the earrings, he said to Lavan, Lavan, come in, bless Hashem. Why did he say bless Hashem? If a person is cursed, he can't say bless Hashem. Say the Zerah Shimshon, Lavan realized that if Abraham sent Eliezer to find a wife to his son, that means that he can't be a slave anymore. How come? Hazal explained something extraordinary. Hazal explained in the Gemara Basechet Baba Metzia in page 59, folio 1. 59, folio 1, yeah. Hazal say that if a person asks, if the master asks his servant to do a mitzvah, 
ought to do some something. No, it's not Gemara Baba Metzia. No, I'm mistaken. No, it's not Baba Metzia. No, it's not Baba Metzia. I don't remember where is it. It's a mistake of mine. They say if if the master asks his servant to do a mitzvah or to do any uh, any kind of a job, and that that he asks him to do it, that means that he given him the freedom not to be a slave. That means that he take him out of slavery. Said the Zerashim Shon, when Laban saw that Eliezer came, Eliezer didn't come by himself. He came with other people because he brought camels. So it was with him. Other people came with him. He said that he realized that now Eliezer is not a slave anymore. Eliezer jumped. His status is changed from curse that is a slave. He changed to what? To be blessed that is not cursed. Say, so Hazal, what does it mean? Curse, not curse. He said that Canaan, that what happened with Noah, you remember that his son Ham, what he done, Noah cursed Canaan, Arur Canaan, Eved Abadim Yelechav, that Canaan will be a slave forever. Say, so Hazal, Eliezer was a slave. From, he was a Canaanite. By that, that Abraham Avinu took him and taught him Torah and then sent them to the mission to find a wife to Yitzhak Avinu, he changed his status from curse to bless. Now he's not anymore a slave. When Lavan saw that, he said, Bo, come, please come, you blessed. Now you blessed. Now I know that you blessed. Why? Because Abraham Avinu sent you. And then Piniti abides. There is no more idols. Why? Because he knew that Eliezer now become a believer in Akadosh Baruch Hu. And if there is statues and there is idol inside the house, Eliezer will not going to come in. Now we understand the Hidush. Come in and there is a place for you and the camel. Now you understand. There is also a secret about the camel, but that's going to take us another half an hour. I don't want to delay you too much. But I, I hope that you enjoy the show. I hope that you get a lot of ideas for Shabbos, that there is a shame, that when you read the Parsha on Shabbos, you get a different way of looking at the Parsha. I would like to wish all of you Shabbat Shalom to you and to your family and to call Amobet Israel. Shabbati milizok ufu'a krova labo. That means Shabbos is the time to shout to Akadosh Bahu and he gonna send cure with no pain. Bezrat Hashem to all the Jewish people, to all of the injuries people that there is, to all the sick people, oh, and especially those that been kidnapped, that we should merit in the power of Shabbat to see Mashiach that came speedily in our day. Amen. Amen. I'm Israel I'm Israel I'm Israel Remember that. There's Rat Hashem that we should merit to celebrate together in Eretz Israel to see better To wish all of you a great Shabbos, a great week ahead to look after yourself. Dr. Lez, once again, thank you, love, for all uh, all the best. Thank, thank you, Rav. Thank you, thank you Rav. Well done, Lez. Well done, Lez. Well done. Good, good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>